Hi boys and girls. We're gonna talk about your biography and how to write it according to the step up to writing style. We've received, I have received, and I know the other two teachers have as well, um, several biographies, rough drafts, that people have taken pictures and then sent them to us. Let me show you. I have an excellent paper written by Sophia here, outstanding on Sojourner Truth. And I also got a wonderful biography from McKenna. And hers was quite, quite well done too. So I was able to go ahead and proofread those and then take a picture and send them back to those two individuals so that they could go ahead and start writing their final draft. So let's talk about how to get this whole um, step up to writing rough draft finished and how to proceed from there. This is called How to Proofread the Rough Draft and Finish. Okay, so you remember, here's my topic sentence, and my topic sentence is green, and my sample I wrote about Fred Rogers. So this is just a little bit of review about how to get started. Now let's look at my, my final draft, my final rough draft, and I'm gonna see if I maybe made some mistakes and how to make it better. Okay, I'm going to remember that this is the pattern that we use when we're doing any of the step up to writing. We write a topic sentence, then we have yellow. The yellow um, sentences are for reasons or details or facts. And we always use a transition word. One of the things that we were talking about is we've gotten back some great rough drafts, but we're forgetting about transition words. So I wanna go ahead and give you a reminder about how you can have a list of transition words that are really helpful and handy for you. So this is a list of transition words here. And so you could say a good, a better, the best. That's a step up to writing formula. But for a biography, you, want, you might want to do, first of all, next, this says the final, or you could say finally, um, you have four yellow sentences. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the transitions that I used when I was writing my sample. But you could even go ahead and use this slideshow. You could take, you could copy this list, just right click on top of the slideshow and then copy it. And then you could keep it as a part of your reference tools. Okay, or you could even look on Google or Yahoo and just put um, list of possible transition words. And I'm sure you can pull up lots of them. And they're all, they're all good for different times. So here is my rough draft. So let's see what I did. I said, I will always be glad that Fred Rogers made TV shows, and here are facts about his life. First, so what you notice there is I used the transition word, and the transition word that I used right there is the word first, okay? And a transition year, word most commonly also has a common after it. So first, Fred Rogers, oh, wait a minute. I'm reading over this and I realized Rogers is his last name and I didn't capitalize it. Now you can mark that in a couple of ways. You can go like this and you can put three lines under it and that tells you you need to make that a capital. Or remember, this is my rough draft. So on my rough draft, I could just go like this. And I can see clearly that I made a mistake there and that I put a small r instead of a large r. First, Fred Rogers was born on March. I did it again. I forgot to put a capital. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a capital M for March right there. March 20th, 1928. Look, I forgot a period. So 
So I'm going to put a period right there and then I'm going to draw an arrow. And what that's going to do is remind me when I'm writing my final draft, not to forget to put that period. Okay. He was born in Pennsylvania and had, and then it says, and had brothers and sisters. Wait a second. I know he didn't have any brothers and sisters. So I'm going to, I left out a word when I was writing this. So I'm going to write the word no, because that should be there. He was born in Pennsylvania and had no brothers and sisters. He was very shy and used puppets to be his uh-oh, I got really fast, speeded up when I was writing the word friends, and I left out a letter. So it just says fur ends, and I always tell the students in my class that you need an I right there, and the way that I remember is because if you fry your friends, your friendship will end, okay? Fry and it's just a little reminder friends oh transition word next and that's a yellow sentence i put a transition word and then i put a comma after it next when he grew up rogers decided to make tv shows now i don't need a transition word for the red sentences so i said he did not like the children's tv shows that were made at that time Rogers really wanted to use TV to teach important things to kids. Let's see what comes up next. Okay, so this is just a reminder. Let me erase, erase, erase. And that's a smudgy pen. I do not like that pen. So it's going to take one extra little step. really quickly. There we go. That's much better. Okay. Remember, make sure you have tra a transition word for every yellow sentence. There should not be one for every sentence, just for the yellow ones. So remember, I put in first comma, next comma. So you might want to check that and make sure the other thing we want to make sure that you're remembering, try not to start all of your sentences the exact same way. So if you look at this, I made some mistakes with that. It says, he was very shy. So I use the pronoun he, and if I look at the sentence right there, it's almost exactly the same. He was born. So maybe a better way to do that, I'm gonna pick up a different pen, but a better way to do that would be to write this. Instead of saying he, I could change it up a little bit. And so I haven't changed the meaning and I'm gonna use his last name right there. So it just makes your writing a little more interesting and so your reader doesn't get kind of bored with the same patterns. You don't want you don't want your writing to sound very similar because it teachers and it'll get marked and it'll say the word redundant. You don't want it to be redundant. It now it reads he was born in Pennsylvania and had no brothers and sisters, Roger was very shy and used puppets to be his friends. Makes it a little more interesting when you're reading it. So I like that and your teachers later on will like that too. Okay, one of the most difficult parts to write is your closing sentence. So we're gonna go back and there's a kind of a secret about how to write your closing sentence. What you want to do is you want to go right back up and you want to take a look, you take a look at what your topic sentence was. And what you're going to do is you're going to write the same thing over again, but you're going to write it in a little bit different way. 
So I'm going to look at my topic sentence on my paper here. And my topic sentence was, and I'll put it so you can read it. I will always be glad that Fred Rogers made TV shows and here are facts about his life. Well, I'm certainly not going to say here are facts about his life because that would not sound right. You can say, and those are the facts about his life. But then that sounds super similar. So let me see if I can if I can think of something else to write, but it it sounds a little different. So when I'm writing my closing sentence, I want to remember just a few things. So I want to remember. Here's my pen. Number one, look at the topic sentence. Go back and look at the topic sentence. Number two, say it in a new way. So you're gonna say the same thing, but say it in a little bit different way. Number three, use different words. Synonyms, I can use synonyms, because that'll make it more interesting. And then this one says, add, you can add a little bit, okay? Remember some things from reading the story that were really important to you but definitely you want to make sure your reader knows that you're done. You're saying the last thing. And then number four, never, 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 even though in first grade you might have done that and it's okay, but never write the end. Don't write, now I'm done. First of all, those wouldn't really be sentences because there are not enough words. So you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to write is kind of like a, a total of what Mr. Rogers was well known for. So I'm saying God used Mr. Rogers let me change that. And his TV shows to show love and respect to children. I think that's a good message and it kind of sums up the total of what the Mr. Rogers show was for, it was to help kids when they were growing up and help them to um, get some really good teaching and because Fred Rogers was a Christian, God could use him in this way. So I hope that this is helpful to you. Remember, there's a couple more things that you want to make sure that you do. The final step is take a picture of your rough draft and send it to your teacher or have another person proofread your paper like your mom or dad or your auntie or your babysitter, whoever's with you. Then you write your final draft on that special paper that we sent. Your paper should look like this. And your paper is on cardstock, which means the paper is thicker than usual. So um, we sent that out on the last exchange day. So you should be about to this part where you're taking your rough draft and writing it onto this final draft paper. Remember also, if you have questions about how it should look, you can watch the video again or you can go back and look at the PowerPoint, which will be posted on RenWeb, okay? Writing is probably one of the harder things you do in second grade, but you're going to have to do writing. Even if you type it on the computer, you still have to compose it in your mind. So writing is a difficult thing, but 
God will help us. God wants us to do hard things, and he's going to help us to do it. So my last thing, be diligent, be industrious, you can do this. Okay? God bless you. Have a good day.